Gentlemen, welcome to Colombia. The locals call this place La Combia, the crazy country, and craziness is exactly what we're up against. You may recall that our Cuban playmate had backing from one of the Colombian cartels. Well, it seems that the cartel isn't happy with the way things turned out in Havana, and they're flexing their muscles on the mainland. They've annexed a few other cartels and joined forces with one of the large rebel groups in the southern part of the country, and as a result, all hell is broken loose. There's a three-cornered fight going on between rebels, paramilitaries, and the government, and it's spilling over the borders into Ecuador and Peru. As a result, there's been a joint request from the regional governments for UN peacekeeping forces to come in and stabilize things, at least in the major civilian population areas. That's what everyone else on this mission gets to do. We, however, get a better assignment. Our target is the MFLC, the Movimiento de las Fueras Libres Colombianas which is what the group bankrolling the Cuban operation is calling itself these days. They're the head of the snake, and we get to chop it off. Once the leadership structure of the MFLC is destroyed, HQ is betting that things will settle back down in a hurry. That's the long-term goal. The short term is a bit less complicated. We've got a team of archaeologists in the Alta Magdalena region who refused to evacuate when the fighting spilled up that way. A team of Belgian peacekeepers went in to pull them out and promptly got ambushed. The survivors were taken prisoner, and we won them back. The good news is that we've located the MFLC encampment where the survivors were taken. Your goal is to neutralize that rebel camp, then find and liberate the prisoners. Be careful, though. The encampment backs up on a massive cave system, and we don't know how many fighters they've got holed up in there. Nice work in Alta Magdalena, people. Now we need you to take on another tough job. The rebels have gotten their hands on a rail line leading down to the Cienega Grande. The MFLC is mounting a major offensive in that region, and this is their major supply conduit. They're running fuel, guns, and ammunition along that rail line, and that means we're going to have to take it out. The Colombian government isn't happy about this. They prefer to have an infrastructure left when all the shooting is over. But if we don't shut off the flow of guns to the rebels there, the government may not have a country left to worry about. You're going to be inserted in the lowlands, near a rebel base that sits right on the tracks. The terrain is swampy, with heavy plant cover and lots of opportunities for the rebels to set ambushes. The first order of business is taking out the guard post the rebels have set up on a road nearby. If you don't, the alarm will get raised and all hell will break loose. Once you've taken care of the sentries, plant charges and demolish those tracks. There's no way the MFLC will be able to repair the damage anytime soon. Once you've done that, you can head for the extraction zone, but my understanding is that HQ wouldn't be too upset if you managed to take out the rebel camp itself. Happy hunting, gentlemen. I'll see you when you get back. That was a nice piece of work you did. You've turned off the pipeline feeding weapons into the north of the country. Now it's time to squeeze out the last few drops. Unmanned reconnaissance aircraft have pinpointed a railroad station on the fringes of the Tatakoa Desert region as something we need to be taking a look at. That's a part of the country where the rebels have been making significant inroads lately, and command thinks it's a good idea to start rolling them back. Our offensive starts with that railway station, and it starts with you. We've got good intelligence suggesting that a train full of weapons for MFLC fighters in the Magdalena Valley will be putting in at that station for offloading. Normally, we just send in a few choppers to take care of it, but the Colombian government is being very insistent that we not blow up any more of their valuable railroad equipment. That means you get to go in and take care of it personally. You'll insert near the railroad depot. Once you're there, seize control of the area to make sure the rebels don't bring up reinforcements along the rail line. With their backup cut off, the rebels will probably fall back to the warehouses where they've been storing the weapons. That's your second target. Get inside those buildings and blow those weapons caches. In addition, Intel says we've got an added prize. Francisco Lever, the MFLC regional commander for the whole of Northwest Colombia, is on site. We don't want you to take him out, however. Instead, slap a signal beacon on his chopper and let him run. With luck, 
He'll lead us right to all of his friends. There's no such thing as a simple operation anymore. This next assignment comes to us through the USDEA. They had a massive uptick in Colombian cocaine coming in through the West Coast, and they have a sneaky suspicion it has something to do with our friends in the MFLC. Before you get your knickers in a twist over doing the DEA's work for them, remember, this is how the MFLC is bankrolling itself. If we cut off their drug money, they're going to run out of bullets. Now, you may be asking yourself where we come in. The answer is simple. We've got good working data back from that beacon you slapped on the chopper in Tatacoa. HQ believes that our man Lever is sitting right on top of that cocaine pipeline, and now he's conveniently showed us where it is. So, you get to go in and shut off the flow of narcotics. Find out how they're shipping those drugs out and render it inoperable. While you're at it, make sure you ensure the safety of the civilians in the village Lever's using. We're the good guys here and that means making sure that the locals don't get caught in the crossfire. Remember, our job is to save these people. Here's the situation. An unmanned recon flight has brought back some interesting images of a deserted harbor about 50 clicks south of El Valle. It looks like the MFLC's been using it as an entry point for weapon shipments. Drugs go out, guns come back in, and the fight continues. We've shut off the outflow of drugs, now it's time to cut off the weapons coming in. You'll be inserting by raft just down the coast from the harbor and making your way there on foot. The site is choked with sunken wrecks and abandoned buildings, which makes it a heaven for snipers. You'll also need to clear off the decks of the boats in the harbor. That's where the bulk of the enemy strength seems to be located. Just make sure your approach is slow and careful, or you're liable to get cut up quickly. Once you've gotten inside the compound, find the transport containers and rig them to blow. We don't want there to be anything useful left on the ground once you're done. Your last objective is probably going to be the hardest. One of the boats the recon plane spotted near the harbor was ID'd as belonging to Marco Abreu, one of the MFLC's top men. If he's still there, and we haven't seen any evidence to indicate he's left, then nab him. If we can get him to answer some questions, this whole thing may get wrapped up a lot sooner than anyone dreamed of. Army Intelligence has some good news for us. They've gotten Abreu to talk, and he's told them plenty. The most important detail he shared was the location of one of the MFLC's main encampments. Ultimately, we'll be taking the site out with airstrikes, but at the moment, it's too risky to do so. They've got an SA-13 SAM launcher parked smack dab in the center of things, and any choppers we send in are at risk. That means we need to tackle this one from the ground, and that means you. You'll be working in conjunction with a Marine unit as well. Coordinate with them and take out that SAM launcher first thing. Then, sweep through the camp and eliminate any resistance. I have good news and bad news to report. The good news is that the MFLC is falling back pretty much anywhere we push them. The bad news is that we know they still have prisoners and there's a real worry at HQ that they'll kill the captives rather than let them be liberated. We're going to take that choice out of their hands. Abreu's given us the location of the prison where most of the captives are being held, and you get to go in and get them out. We're going to drop you in a chopper right in their laps, and when that bird hits the ground, you'll be under fire. Secure your insertion zone as quickly as you can. We'll have troops following up behind you, and we'll need a place for them to come in. But don't wait for backup. Once the attack starts, those prisoners aren't safe, so you'll need to find them as quickly as possible. Along the way, find the prison's armory and destroy its contents. Remember, this is a surgical strike. Let the men coming in behind you worry about the heavy lifting. Just take out that armory, find the prisoners, and get out. Someone else will do the cleanup.
This is it, people, the grand finale. We've pinpointed the MFLC's main encampment, and once we take it out, this fight is over. Unfortunately, we can't just bomb it into powder. There's a twist, and it's a nasty one. A former rebel fighter in Cuba just came in out of the cold and told the government there that there are still sleeper cells in place all over the country. They're under orders to mount simultaneous widespread terror attacks unless they get a radio call telling them to hold. The only place we know the hold code is kept? You guessed it, the MFLC's main base. We've already got some UN peacekeeper units dug in near there, and your first objective will be to help them out. Once you finish supporting their position, infiltrate the camp itself. You'll be looking for two things at first, intel documents with the stop code for the sleeper cells and the code that will let you read them. Your last set of objectives is the most important one, and they involve the base's radio tower. Find it, secure it, and get to the communication center so you can send out that hold code. There's always a rebel officer on duty at the comm center, and you'll need to keep him alive to send the signal for you. Once the signal's sent, you can blow the place to flinders, but make sure you send the stop code first. Otherwise, a lot of people are going to die, and all of the good work we did in Cuba will be undone. Good luck.